Burns. Kitty, what have you got to say for yourself? Kitty dear, can you play chess? Don't smile, my dear. I'm asking it seriously. Now do try. There's a dear. Let's pretend we're the kings and queens. You can be the black queen, Kitty. If you sat up, you'd look just like her. Dinah really ought to have taught you better. If you're not good directly, Kitty, I'll put you through into the looking glass house. How would you like that? I'll tell you all about it. The room you can see there, that's just the same as our drawing room. Only the things go the other way around. I'm sure it's got, oh, such beautiful things in there. How would you like to live in the looking glass house? Oh, Kitty, how nice it would be if we could only get through. I know, Kitty. Let's pretend there really is a way through to the looking glass house. Why, I do declare, it would be quite easy to get through there, Kitty. Alice hardly knew how she got there, but in a minute she was up on the mantelpiece and the looking glass was beginning to melt away. The other room was not quite as ordinary as Alice expected it to be. Even the clock seemed to be grinning at her. And as for the pictures on the wall... took no notice of the question. It, he could neither hear nor see her. I, I assure you, my dear, I turned quite cold to the very ends of my whiskers. Your poor, beautiful whiskers. Oh, the horror of it all. I shall never, never forget it. You will, my dear, if you don't write it down. Alice took hold of the pencil and wrote, The White Knight is hiding near the fireplace. That's not what you intended to write. Very strange. A looking glass book, of course. If I hold it up to the glass, the words will go the right way round. Jabberwocky. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the way. All mimsy were the borrow groves. Borrow groves? And the mome rats out grey. Mome rats? Phew! It sounds quite pretty. But it is rather hard to understand. Right. And as in uffish thought he stood, the Jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? 
Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, fraptious day, kalu, kalay, he chortled in his joy. Well, now, if I don't make haste, I'll have to leave before I've seen the rest of the house. And so Alice started towards the door. And then she found herself gently floating down the stairs and out into the garden, without her feet ever touching the ground. I should see the garden far better if I could get to the top of that hill. If I take this path, it should take me straight there. But how curiously it twists. Oh! No, I'm back where I started. No matter how often Alice tried to get to the hill, every path she took brought her straight back to the house. Oh, it's too bad. I never met such a house for getting in the way, never. Resolutely, she turned her back on the house, and she set off once more, determined to keep straight on till she got to the top of the hill. This time, she found herself near some large flowers. If I were to go back now, that would be an end to all my adventures. Oh, Tiger Lily, how wonderful it would be if you could talk. We can talk, when it's worth a while. And can all the flowers here talk? It's hard to credit. We can talk as well as you can, and a great deal louder. But it isn't considered good manners for us to begin. Lots of things. An awkward shake. I dare say we shall see her soon. She's coming! I can hear her footsteps! Alice looked round and saw it was the Black Queen. She decided to go and meet her, for though the flowers had been interesting, she felt it would be far grander to have a talk with a real queen. She has grown a good deal. Another plan. I'll walk in the opposite direction and see if that works. Where do you come from, child, and where are you going? Look up, speak nicely, and do not twiddle your fingers. Think before you speak, child. It saves time, and always curtsy when you say your majesty. I only wanted to see what your garden was like, Your Majesty. If you don't mind, Your Majesty. That's all right, child. Though when you say garden, I've seen gardens compared with which this one would be called a wilderness. So I thought I'd try to get to the top of that hill. When you say hill, I could show you hills in comparison with which you would call that a mere valley. No, I shouldn't. A hill can't be a valley. That would be complete nonsense. You may call it nonsense if you like. But I've heard some nonsense compared with which that would be as sensible as a complete dictionary. I do declare the looking glass land is all marked out like a giant chessboard. It's a huge game of chess. What fun, what fun, what jolly, jolly fun. I wouldn't mind being a pawn, you know. If only I might be allowed to join in the game, Your Majesty. Though, if of course I could perhaps become a queen, I'd like that best of all, if it pleased Your Majesty. That's very easily managed. You can be the White Queen's pawn if you like. You'll be in the second square to begin with. When you get to the eighth square, then you'll become a queen. You know the rules. A pawn moves two squares at its first move. So you'll go very quickly through the third square by railway. In no time, you'll be in the fourth square, which belongs to Tweedledum and Tweedledee. The fifth is mostly water. 
I'm the sixth. Belongs to Humpty Dumpty. Nothing to say, child. I didn't know I had to say anything just yet. You should have said, Your Majesty, it's extremely kind of you to tell me all this. However, we will suppose it all said. On the seventh square is Dark Forest, but one of the knights will show you the way. Now, when at last you get to the end of the eighth square, we shall then be queens together. And it's all feasting and fun, you'll see. Come on! Faster! Faster! Are we nearly... are we nearly there? Nearly there? Why, we went past ten minutes ago! Faster! You can rest for a little now. All the time, we've been under the same tree. Of course we have. What did you expect? In our country, you generally get somewhere if you run very fast. <laughs> That's a slow sort of country. You see here, it takes all the running you can do to stay the same place, child. Here, if you want to get somewhere else, you'll have to run twice as fast. Let's try. Oh, please, I'd really rather not. I'm so hot and so thirsty. I know just what you would like. Have a biscuit. Alice thought it would not be civil to say no, but it wasn't at all what she wanted. It was so very dry <coughs> that she choked. First quench now, child. Stand up straight. Turn out your toes. Remember who you are and remember all I've told you. Goodbye. Goodbye. I wonder what those creatures are buzzing around down there. They're not bees. In fact, they were anything but bees. They were flying elephants. The idea quite took her breath away. Alice wondered how she'd ever explain when she got back home, and they asked her if she'd enjoyed her walk. Oh, what fun that would be. I'll say I liked it well enough, only it was so dusty and hot. And the elephants did tease so. Whenever they come too close, you have to keep brushing them away, you know? Then all at once, Alice remembered. She was a pawn in a game of chess, and she had to get through the third square. Tickets, please. Now then, show me your ticket, little girl. Don't keep, keep him waiting, waiting, little girl. I'm afraid I haven't got a ticket. There wasn't a ticket office where I came from. There wasn't room for one where she came from. Why, there, each piece of land is worth at least four thousand pounds for every inch. You should have bought one from the engine driver. There seems no point in my speaking. This time, Alice heard their thoughts, not their words. Better not to speak at all. Why, sentences alone are worth at least £1,000 for every word. <laughs> You're travelling in the wrong direction, little girl. <laughs> Just as Alice began to wish the journey would end, it did. And there she was in a wood. large moths they seem to have in this place. I wonder what they're called. Perhaps I'll give them a new name. I know, the rare exploding tree hippo moths. Suddenly it occurred to Alice that she must have arrived in the fourth square on the chessboard. The Black Queen had told her at the start 
It was the one that belonged to Tweedledum and Tweedledee. I can't stay here long. I'll just call and say, how do you do? And ask them the way out of the wood. Ow! Oh, we're not just waxworks, you know. And if you think we are waxworks, you ought to have to pay to look at us. As we're not waxworks, you ought at least to speak to us. I'm sure I'm really very sorry. The very first thing you must do when you come on a visit is to shake hands, you know. And then you must say, how do you do? Tweedledum and Tweedledee agreed to help the battle. For Tweedledum and Tweedledee has spoiled his nice new rattle. Has spoiled his new, has spoiled his new, has spoiled his nice new rattle. Just then flew down a monstrous coat as black as a tapawell, which which frightened us to leave us so they quite forgot their quarrel. They quite forgot, they quite forgot, they quite forgot. My rattle! It's my rattle, and it's quite spoiled. You needn't be so angry. It's nothing but an old rattle. But it isn't old. It's new, I tell you, my nice new rattle. Of course, there's nothing for it now but to have a battle. You agree? You'll have to. There's nothing else we can do. I suppose so. But only if she'll help to dress us up properly. Tie it on fast, or he may cut off my head in a battle. You know, it's the most serious thing that can possibly happen to get one's head cut off. I'm very, very brave, generally. It seems just that today I happen to have a headache. Do I look very pale? But I'm far worse than him. I've got a rotten tooth as well. Then you'd better not fight today. We must have a bit of a battle, now that it's all been arranged. We'll fight till about six o'clock, and then we'll go off to tea. What a thick black cloud this is, and how fast it's moving. Why, I do believe it's got wings. It's the monstrous crow. So? Here comes the White Queen at last. Is this yours, Your Majesty? Mm. <laughs> Would you care to become my lady's maid? I'm sure I need one. Tuppence a week and jam every other day. Thank you. But, madam, I don't care for any jam today. I wasn't offering you jam today. Jam is for the other days. I don't understand you at all. It's dreadfully confusing. It's because of living backwards, remembering things before they happen. Living backwards? I've never heard of such a thing. Oh! Oh, my finger's bleeding! Look at my finger! Have you pricked it, then? I haven't pricked it yet. But see here, I very soon will. You see, that accounts for the bleeding. That's the way things are here. Backwards, as I explained to you. Your poor finger, Your Majesty. I hope it's better. It is. Oh, much better. Much better. Ba ba. Make up your mind. What do you want? 
I should like to buy an egg, please, if you sell them. Five pence farthing for one, twopence halfpenny for two, young lady. I see. Then two are cheaper than one. In that case, I'll have one, please. I never put anything straight into people's hands. It's better to get it yourself. Much better. Clearly, this couldn't be anybody else but Humpty Dumpty, and Alice had reached another square. How exactly like an egg he is! It's very provoking to be called an egg. Very provoking indeed. Some people have as much sense as a baby. Don't you think you'd be safer down on the ground? That wall is very narrow. Of course not. And if I ever did fall off, and there's no chance that I will, but if I ever did fall off the wall, the king has promised to send all his horses and to send all his men. Oh, you were listening at the door, or you wouldn't know? Not that, sir. I read it in a book. I wonder, could you tell me the meaning of the words in a poem? I've just read. I can explain all the poems that were ever invented, and a good many that haven't been invented. Let's hear it then. Jabberwocky, twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the way. That's enough to begin with. Now then, brillig means about four o'clock in the afternoon when you're broiling things for tea. I see. And what's slithy? Hmm. It means lithe, and it means slimy. It's a concertina word. <laughs> Take two words and squash them into one, and I presto, you've got a new word. Ah, I understand. And what are toves? Something like badgers and something like corkscrews. <laughs> they must be very curious-looking creatures. Oh, they are. <laughs> You're sure that's what the word means? When I use a word, it means whatever I choose. Whatever you choose. Precisely. Of all the unsatisfactory people, of all the unsatisfactory people I've ever, ever come across in my whole life. Did you happen to meet my soldiers, my dear? I sent him all that I could spare, just as I always promised. I think I met several thousand on my way here. Precisely 4,207 men and horses were sent. I haven't seen the messenger yet. Just look along the road and tell me if you can see him. There's nobody. If only I had such eyes to be able to see nobody in from that distance. Messenger, who did you see on the road? I saw nobody. That's nothing new. This young lady saw him too. Now, what is your message? It's best. I think if I whisper in your ear. Do that. The message is this. Then at it again! How many times do I have to tell you? If you ever do that to me again, Messenger, I will have you buttered. Who's at it again? Why do you ask? It's the lion and the unicorn, of course. The joke is, they're fighting for the crown. And the best of it is, it's my crown all the while. What about that? Come on! As they ran towards the town, in her head, Alice kept hearing the words of the old song. The lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. The lion beat the unicorn all around the town. Some gave them white bread, some gave them Brown. Some gave them plum cake and drunk them out of town and drunk them out of town and drunk them. Out I suppose it's the winner who gets the crown. Let me know. What an idea. <laughs> Would you be good enough to stop for just a minute, please? For a minute? A minute flies past so fast I might not be quick enough to catch hold of it, however good I was. Ahoy there! Time for a short break. What is that standing over there? That's a real child. A real live child. Oh, uh, I always thought the children were nothing but imaginary monsters. And I always thought unicorns were nothing but imaginary monsters. All right, my friend. I believe in you. You believe in me. Parkin? That's fair. To be fair would be to hand round the plum cake, monster child. 
It's really very provoking. Every time I cut the cake, it joins itself up together again, sir. You don't know how to manage a looking glass cake, young lady. You hand it round first, and then you can cut it up afterwards. Alice didn't quite know where the drums came from. If that doesn't drum them out of town, she thought, nothing will. Then suddenly, with a bang, she was through to the seventh square. Stop. Check. Check. You're my prisoner now. Oh! No, she's not. Check to you. Check. But she's my prisoner already. But I came to her rescue. Mm, glorious victory, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't want to be anybody's prisoner, if you don't mind. I want to be a queen, a real queen. So you will be, when you've got out of this wood. I'll see you out, then I must go back. Why do you have that mouse trap there? Not many mice could get up on a horse. Perhaps not. But if one did come, I'd like to be ready for it. Excuse me. I'm afraid you've not had much practice in riding a horse, have you? Oh. I've had plenty of practice, plenty of practice. The great art of riding is to keep your balance. Oh, as I was saying, I think better upside down. The more head downwards I am, the more my mind goes on working. You look sad. I'll sing a song to comfort you. When you hear it, it'll bring tears to your eyes. I found an aged, aged man sitting on the gate. Now if I drop upon my hand a very heavy weight, I weep for it reminds me so of that old man I used to know, whose look was mild, whose speech was slow, whose hair was whiter than the snow, who seemed distracted with his woe, who snorted like a buffalo. That summer evening, long ago, a sitting on a gate. Down the hill and over the brook, and you'll be a queen. Would you care to wave this handkerchief to me as I go? I think it would cheer me up, you see. Years afterwards, Alice could bring the whole scene to mind again, as if it had been only yesterday. The mild blue eyes and kindly smile of the night the evening sun gleaming through his hair, and his strange, sad song. Ah! Ah! Well, this is grand. I never expected I would become a queen. Quite so soon. Please, could you tell me... Only speak when you're spoken to. You aren't a real queen till after the exam. Here's a division problem for you. Divide a loaf by a knife, and do you know what you get? I suppose... Slices of bread and butter, of course. Now a subtraction problem. Take a boat from a dog. What is left? Nothing but the dog. You're wrong! The dog and his temper. What nonsense. Now, can you tell us what's the cause of lightning? Thunder. No, 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 the other way round. It's too late to correct it, much too late. During the last set of Tuesdays, we had such a thunderstorm, I almost forgot which set of days we're in altogether. In our country, we only have one Tuesday at a time. <laughs> it's a poor place you come from. Here, we sometimes have five Tuesdays at once. But let me give you an invitation to Alice's dinner party. And I also invite you, my dear. But I didn't know I was going to give a party. If I am, I do think I should do the inviting myself. We gave you plenty of opportunity to do so, child. But I dare say you've not had many lessons in manners yet. <gasps> the eighth square at last. Know what returns to the week after next by order. 
Let it be known in the whole of this land that the looking glass creatures, whoever they be, dine tonight with the Black Queen, the White Queen, and me, by special request of Queen Alice. No, don't be shy, my dear child. Have you met the mutton, Alice? This is the leg of mutton. Leg of mutton, this is Alice. May I offer you a slice? Certainly not. It isn't at all polite. To cut someone you've just been introduced to, take it away. I won't be introduced to the pudding, or I'll get nothing to eat. Let me do the honors, pudding. May I present Alice? Alice, may I present pudding? Take the thing away. Raise your glasses to the health of Queen Alice. I don't know what I'll do. And as for you, I'll shake you back into a kitten. We've had such a nice dream, thought Alice, and you were there with me. Let's consider. Alice looked at the kitten. Was I part of your dream, my dear? Or were you part of mine? Who was it that dreamed it all? It's a serious question, Kitty. But the kitten only purred. Which do you think it was?